Uh, hi all, for everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Brendan Hoskins. I'm a senior planner here at JBA. Uh, unfortunately for me, I think I was never so talented or, or creative with a pencil, so I've, I've had to become a planner. Um, but it, it, it has been lucky for me. So over the last five and a half years or so, I've worked at JBA and I've had the opportunity to be involved in so many competitions, um, whether it be a local competition in the middle of the city with all Sydney architects or an international competition for a 200 plus metre tall tower or a competition where it's an open ideas competition with over 500 reg registrations. Um, really had that opportunity to learn some lessons and really try and test what a, what's a good process um, and how does it fit in with planning. So I'm coming at this in sort of two perspectives I see. One as a planner, which my background's in, and another as a design competition manager. So a lot of planners these days have been not forced, but I guess pushed down that pathway of managing competitions. As these competitions are so entrenched in the, the planning process, it's something we need to adapt to and change to. So I think there's a few key challenges and one pretty significant opportunity that I think, uh, you know, as Graham said, we've had 100 competitions. The next 100 competitions, we need to look at these challenges and look at these opportunities and see how we can overcome them. So. The first, the first challenge I really see is competitions and how they fit into the planning framework. So if I can, if I can be a bit city focused at the moment, we've got quite a, a good tried and tested process of a stage one DA, a design competition, and then a stage two DA. So the stage one DA does set a, a nice good envelope that's tested then in the design competition and then the stage two DA gets right down into the detail. I think we're at quite a junction at the moment with the release of the Central Sydney Planning Strategy. So a, a marvellous document with so much effort and work gone into it. It really sets the vision for the next 20 plus years of the City of Sydney. And in that there's, there's great opportunities. But to unlock those opportunities it's not a blanket unlocking of them. It's looking site by site, testing new controls, testing new heights, looking at the amenity of the public domain. So at this real junction now of where, do the, where design competitions fit in that new process? If, if we are doing planning proposals for each individual site, do we have a design competition which fits into that early stage that informs the planning proposal? Or do we work up the planning proposal, then do the design competition, then do the stage two DA? Are there opportunities where the design competition process will be morphed into the planning proposal? So, you know, a proponent may work with an architect for two, three years. They may be a wonderful architect you may try and test every single scenario possible. Is there, a, is there a way, there's a way that, there's a waiver at the moment, but can we, can we focus on that a bit more and, and implement that more into the future as we really, our planning framework's changing and there's great opportunities there, but also the challenges of how we're going to adapt. The next big challenge I think is sustainability. So looking at this from more of a design competition manager perspective, the next hundred competitions which we have are, are becoming more frequent, they're becoming more intense in scale. Uh, the resources which everyone on both sides of the fence are putting into these competitions are huge. I think we need to have an honest and frank discussion between all stakeholders on what do we expect from design competitions. Does every single competition need to be that 150% output or can it be something a little more simple which reflects the scale of the new building? So. I, I see a few familiar faces here, one of, one of the panellists with me, that we had an open ideas competition in Ryde. So the city of Ryde made quite a bold choice in my mind to hold an, an open ideas competition, much like Peter opened up this morning. In that competition, the first stage of that was for six A3 sheets of paper. So that's a huge site with a huge development potential, and it was six simple A3 pieces of paper. Now, I, I don't think in every design competition you can go to that extent but surely there's a middle ground that we can all work together to find out how can we better manage resources over the next 100 competitions to make sure that these, these have longevity and, and are, remain successful. The last thing which I'll go through is, is less a challenge but more of a, an opportunity which is right down in the T-Dell and, and Rob has uh, potentially stolen my thunder a little bit and walked it, but I think technology is a huge thing that we need to look for in the future of how we can implement technology in our design competitions and how we can really use it to both advance the design of new buildings and, and the city itself, but also how we convey those ideas. So we've, we've got excellent new technologies such as virtual reality you, you saw in that, 
that clip from Utopia, which I can't watch as a planner. It, it cuts a bit too close to the bone. But, but thanks for your summary, Rob, of it. Because I think you know, things like virtual reality, augmented reality, you know, Pokemon Go, people walking around the city and, and seeing these things that aren't there, it's all digital. There's so many of those technologies available to convey design ideas. Now, with that opportunity, there are challenges. You know, these technologies may not be the most cost effective. I just talked about sustainability. How do we, how do we make these competitions sustainable if we're allowing all these new technologies? You know, as soon as someone does it, the next person is going to do it, then the next person. But how do we, how do we allow those technologies to be used in competitions? Can we get on the front foot and try and ascertain, I guess, the best possible way to use those first and then set the standard for com competitors in a competition. So I think there's, there's a lot of challenges, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, things have been tried and tested, there's lessons have learnt, lessons have been learnt. And I think we're, we're all adapting, you know, we're all in this room today and, and we know that competitive design and, and working out what the best design for a city is, is, is something that we, we want. So I think we need to continue to work together and, and have these discussions on how to go forward in the next 100 competitions. Thanks.